Good day, everyone, and welcome to our morning, our Friday morning session here in uh, in Cordoba. We have a number of interesting talks today, um, discussing a wide range of uh, topics that are pertinent to uh, to phosphorgy. So why don't we get why don't we get started? Um, Gerald Pinoy is here, and he will talk to us about the the Zoo project from from OGC WPS to OGC API processes. So I'm interested to see this one for sure. Um, Gerald is the CEO and founder of Geolabs. He's a charter member of OSGeo. He's the founder and PSG chair of the Zoo project and a developer of the map of the MapMint uh, spatial data infrastructure um, platform and package. He's associated and it's associated MapMint for me Android applications to record data onto the field. So with that, uh, Gerald, I, uh, I hand it over to you. Hello, everyone. Uh, so I won't introduce myself. I am glad to be here today for this first 4G 2021 online and to have the opportunity of presenting you the Zoo project. So I will give you information about what is happening with the project, trying to highlight how do we start from the WPS implementation and slowly move to the OGC API processes. As an introduction to the Zoo project, I would say that the Zoo project is a generic processing platform mainly written in C and C++ and released under MIT X11 license. It aims to provide a de developer-friendly framework for implementing services. The idea that led us to create this processing platform is that we have a great set of open source software available in OSGO software list, but we all need to learn how to use it. So our goal was to provide a way to interact with every library or application in the exact same way. With the WPS provided by the Open Geospatial Consortium, the OGC, we had at end a standard way to do what we planned to do. This is why we started to implement the WPS service 1.0.0 standard. So the project started back in 2008 during this, the Phosphorgy in South Africa, where the ID born. From there, we tried to publish a new release for every global Phosphorgy event that is happening every year, that was happening every year. For now, we try to publish new releases every year, as you can see on the slide. Uh, back in 2012, the Zoo project entered into OSGO incubation process, but unfortunately, we did not finish it yet. So let's now briefly talk about the Zoo tribes, starting by the project steering committee, where you can see the name of uh, the OSGO president, OSG, uh, Angelo Strostos, or also a very active member, which is also a GSOC mentoring, uh, Raja Chinde from India, myself, Jeff Makina, Venkatesh Raghavan, and so on. So here is a photo of the Zoo Project PSC member, including uh, some old one, but we are still loving uh, everybody. We were meeting in Bremen during the first 4G Europe there. Here is a list of developers that are uh, making and uh, maintaining the Zoo project source code. Here is a list of the, our, what we call our knowledge partner. They are universities that help us promoting the Zoo project by organizing uh, classes or introduction workshops or events and get it and get the project involved in research and development project. So we have the Osaka City University, Foundation and Mood Mac, SUPSI. Graduate University of Chinese Academy of Science, uh, Nareswan University, and Labor Laboratorio di Geomatica Politecnico di Milano, that are our knowledge partner. <clears throat> so our community, to finish with the community, our community is open, so don't hesitate to participate and contribute to the Zoo project. So I'm sorry, but I know it's early in a few areas on the earth, but let's go back to the technical stuff. Here are the components that are included in the, within the Zoo project. So first we have the Zoo kernel, which is a processing engine I was speaking about, implemented in C and C++, and which is able to dynam dynamically load and execute services. Then you have the Zoo services, which is a collection of ready-to-use services based on existing libraries. Then you have the Zoo API, which is a JavaScript API, basically, that can be used to invoke other services and change them on the server side. And the last but not least component is the Zoo Client, 
that which is a JavaScript library to be used on the client side to uh, interact with remote WPS implementation, which can be the project or any other WPS implementation. So the Zoo kernel, as I told you, is the heart of the platform. It implements the WPS version 1 and 2, provided by the OpenJS Special Consortium, and runs on common platform. The Zoo kernel is able to dynamically load services implemented in various uh, programming languages, including C, Fortran, Java, PHP, Perl, Ruby, Python, C Sharp, JavaScript, and the last to be to came in dense was R. In addition to giving you the capability to implement services, the kernel also supports out-of-the-box applications provided by GIS engines, such as Orfeo Toolbox and Saga GIS. The idea of the kernel is to provide ways to let you run your code quickly as a WPS compliant service. A what I think is a very useful capability of the kernel is that it makes you able to automatically publish your results as OGC web services. For this, it relies on the map server software, which makes your data available as WMS, WFS, WCS, depending on the nature of your data. For instance, in this screenshot, you can see clearly how it can be used from a client user interface. On the map, you can see the result using WMS of the execution of a WPS service responsible to compute the safest path for bikes. This same result is used to show on the right hand side the path uh, the bike will have to follow by using the corresponding WFS service. Then this WFS service is used at a third time as a parameter to be sent to the service that will compute the elevation profile along the computed path. So in this example, we computed the CFS path once and re reused it, this result, three times. Uh, in the Zoo project, we are supporting asynchronous requests and uh, we have implemented a get status service, which is available to get the ongoing status of execution for version of the standard, which is not offering this capability. <coughs> Here is an important new feature that makes the Zoo kernel now able to remotely invoke services running on HPC server. For doing so, we rely on Slurm queuing mechanism and SSH to upload the data and the sbatch file associated with your execution. Here you can see the client interface presenting the history of the execution. As you may notice on the top right screenshot, uh, the map server automatic publication has been also used for input data and not only for the output. So let's go to OGC API. Uh, Swagger development started back in 2010 and it was renamed uh, as Open API on 1st January. 2016, it is very popular and used almost everywhere as our clients are relying on it uh, currently already. For some years now, a various working group at the Open Geospatial Consortium as working on the new, stand on new standards that we may name OGC APIs. Among them, there is the OGC API processes, which offer huge improvement over the past WPS standard. Even if the source code has been modified to support this new standard, you can run every existing service using the OGC API processes without requiring you any modification. So you can see on the left hand side, even if it's very small because uh, user interface is very huge, you can see the Swagger UI user interface and here you can see the default landing page. If time permits, I will go back to this slide to make you a short demo, but by now, let's move on and thanks the OGC. This year, I got the pleasure to participate and be involved in the OGC member meeting. It was a great experience for me, and I got the chance to be grati gratified, gratified by this award for my participation in the developer track. So you may think I am crazy showing you this award and to gratify myself as a time. But if I show you this award, it's more because uh, getting it made me think that the Zoo project has proven to be a very great prototyping platform for new standards and new concept, concepts. About new concepts, let's have a look at what is happening uh, right now in the Zoo project and Zoo kernel specific development. Geolabs is involved in uh, the FIDIAS European project, where its role is to adapt the Zoo kernel for handling execution of remote service 
running on HPC. As we have seen before uh, in the previous slide for the GeoSuite project that I did not name, but this time the applications are packaged as a singularity as singularity containers. This container can then be deployed on demand following the availability of the data managed managed with the IROTS technology. I won't go in deeper details here, but uh, I would like to inform uh, the community that uh, this development will benefit from the whole community and even for the non-HPC execution. Anyway, let's talk now about what is uh, what are the zoo services. They are composed of two different things. First, a service provider, which corresponds to the service code, basically depending on the language you are using, obviously. Then a metadata file that can be written in different formats. We have our own zoo configuration file format. You can use also YML, or you can even store the metadata in, the Postgre in a PostgreSQL data table. And this is it. If you want to turn your code into WPS service, you can see here a sample Hello World program that is implementing, uh, that, is imp that was implemented using Python language. As we try to make for our project, we try to keep it simple, stupid. So what are the available uh, services? Well, it is written here uh, 500 plus, but it should be 700 plus. It's a mistake in the slide. But anyway, we are providing various GIDAL tools, the one you are commonly using from the command line, but this way, this time you can uh, run them remotely. We are providing very few Seagull services. We are also providing uh, all the Orfeo toolbox applications that are available as uh, WPS services, I said earlier, as for Saga GIS. In the past, we were able also to support uh, GrassGIS, but it is not the case anymore, even if we have some plan to reintroduce it uh, shortly. In 2016, the Zoo project participated in the Google Summer of Code as an OSGO incubating project. And uh, this project uh, made uh, Java services similar to the basic vector operations that we, were, we had implemented using GIDA library. And it was a nice illustration of what you can do with different programming languages or libraries. So now let's talk uh, shortly about the Zoo API, which is a server-side JavaScript API library, even if it's not really the case, based on open layer uh, 2.7. It lets you access a uh, function from the Zoo kernel API, C API from the JavaScript world. And this helps you to invoke an, uh, services and change them together. One limitation of this uh, Zoo API currently is that it supports only WPS version 1.0.0. This is an example of the JavaScript service using, of the JavaScript, of a JavaScript service using the Zoo API in the old mapping version. And here is another one the old georeferencer version online. Last but not least, the Zoo client is a client-side JavaScript library that is the integration of WPS inter interaction with your web application. Here are some examples of the user interface uh, that has been made using the Zoo client, like the Saga GIS demonstration you can see online on the Zoo project.org website. Same for the Orfeo toolbox. What is interesting in this uh, two uh, demonstration application is that the HTML forms you can see on the uh, left hand side are dynamically created based on the description of the service. Obviously, the Zoo client is used in the newer version of the MapMin software. You may note that this is a profile service available from the demo, also available on the Zoo project website then the new georeferencer and the manager. Something relatively new is that the new project can be set up using Docker Compose now. So it, it makes it very easy to deploy in a matter of minutes. Zoo project has recently moved during this year to GitHub. With this move, we are now using GitHub Action to build and publish the last test Zoo project Docker image on Docker Hub. Accessorily, we are also reusing the CP testing uh, bash script that we made uh, some years back for the WPS benchmarking to validate that the request and other responses are valid for both WPS 1 and WPS 2 version. There is no test uh, included yet for the OGC API processes. So thanks to the work of uh, Jeff Makina from Gateway Geo Company, 
a zoo kernel package is now available in MS4W, including the demonstration user interface. As said, as uh, when uh, Tom presented and introduced me, uh, on top of the zoo project, he mentioned the mapping product. On top of the zoo project, we have made uh, an online GIS platform that let you interact easily with your WPS services and your own data directly, remotely. And that is it for me. So in case there are any questions, I will be very glad to answer them. If there are any, obviously. Excellent. Thank you, Rob. That was, uh, that was an interesting and, uh, and fantastic update. Sounds like there's been a lot of work, especially with regards to the new, uh, the new standards. So it's always good to see early implementations of the updated standards. Um, we have a few questions from, uh, from the audience. So I'll just go through them here. The first question is, were there any specific problems that made GRASS GIS unavailable? Well, actually, the work to integrate uh, GRASS GIS uh, within the Zoo project has been handled by uh, Soeren Gebert. And uh, he has stopped its development uh, back in 2016. I may be wrong with the date. So from here, he has put his code on a Google code. So the code is still available in Python. Uh, I remember in uh, 2017, modifying his source code uh, locally on my uh, own uh, computer to run some testing. As the uh, GRASS library progressed, and the WPS GRASS bridge was not uh, progress making any progress anymore, unfortunately, it, it has lost track in the last test uh, GRASS GIS modifications. But I was able in, back in 2017 to integrate it back and to make it running. So actually, I have noticed that uh, plenty of the source code that uh, has been published by Soeren Gebert is currently using, used by some uh, other software that I won't name. So I think I, I should be, we should be able as a community to build up a new GRASS uh, support. But uh, rather than depending on uh, Python on the Python language binding, which is supported by the zoo kernel, we are planning to integrate uh, this support back by using directly the C API, which is provided by GRASS.js, expecting to have better results than using the Python version. I don't know if it has answered your question, but uh, basically, let's say that the WPS GRASS bridge stopped its development, so it makes it difficult to keep it uh, on track with the last test uh, mm -hmm. available GRASS GIS version. Great. Next question. Is it possible to link Zoo to another WPS service? Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, depending on what you are willing to do, for instance, you may create a JavaScript service on the on the Zoo server. And then from this uh, JavaScript service, you can uh, interact with uh, another foreign WPS server, uh, take advantage of uh, the available service there, then uh, get back the result and use this result with a local service or yet another uh, remote service. Nice. Next question. Are there any plans to support WPS2 in the Zoo project? Sorry, so maybe I was not clear enough, but uh, we are actually supporting WPS 2.0 version 100% already. Okay, so you're supporting both uh, version 1, version 2, as well as the evolving OGC API processes? Yes, we try to. Excellent. But WPS 2, when I say try, we try to, I mean for OGC API processes, we try to follow the ongoing development. But for WPS2, we are already using uh, Zoo. We, clients are already using uh, research institutes and laboratories are already using the WPS2 version in production environment. Nice. Just to be clear. Are you able to, I'll ask a couple of questions, but if, if the audience has more questions, feel free. Um, are, are you able to link to another um, OGC API processes service? No. Unfortunately not, because, uh, I mean, 
uh, it depends what you what do you mean by uh, integrate uh, communicating with a foreign uh, uh, OGC API processes uh, server instance because uh, as I tried to explain during my presentation unfortunately the zoo API which gives you the capability to communicate with remote other services is unfortunately based and working only with WPS one. Mm -hmm. So in case we had uh, adapted the Zoo API, we, I should answer yes, but unfortunately it is not the case and there is no plan uh, for this as of yet. Mm -hmm. Another question, is there any intent to make Zoo uh, a, a serverless uh, capability? Like mm -hmm. a serverless project? Uh, there is no plan. Uh, there is no plan as of yet. No, okay. there is no plan to be to run serverless. But we actually you can run your process directly from a GitHub action by deploying the Docker Compose infrastructure and all the components that are involved nowadays in the the project. So you can uh, run processes uh, serverless. But then, uh, as we are relying on web services, I wonder how this would work. Mm -hmm. Next question. Is there a way to use the OGC ADIS EMS specification with Zoo without the complete EO EPCA environment? So... I don't know, honestly, I'm not very familiar with the ADES EMS specification, unfortunately. I have uh, noted that uh, in ADES uh, project on GitHub, they are mentioning uh, using the Zoo project already on their own platform. But uh, they are also mentioning some uh, lacking capabilities that are currently ongoing like uh, stopping uh, remote uh, execution uh, running on another on another server basically so this is currently on lead but uh, no i'm not sure uh, i'm not sure i have an answer for this question unfortunately i'm not sure there is any way i only know that in ADES, the european special agency is relying on the Zoo project and are making comment on it great Next question. Can you estimate the difficulty of developing a client plugin for allowing QGIS algorithms and tools to be used? Uh, well, uh, this is a very, very tricky question. I don't know if I should be frank in answering this question, actually, because uh, in the past, back in 2015, during uh, the Phosphor G in South Korea, if I recall properly, I met with some uh, fellows that are uh, developing the WPS uh, client uh, user interface. I have made a few modifications to the source code and uh, tried to contribute it back, but it was not accepted. When I say it was not accepted, it was a bit more than not accepted. So actually, no, I don't have any plan to integrate anything within QGIS. As unfortunately, I think the best thing for QGIS will be to integrate the Zoo kernel as a processing engine within the QGIS core engine for being able to integrate all the services that are already available in the Zoo project and make them uh, available in not only on QGIS desktop, but only on QGIS server, providing an OGC API processes server implementation, WPS1 and WPS2. That will be, I think, a great addition to QGIS. Tim Sutton, uh, that I met in uh, 2019 and tried to introduce it, this idea, was very excited about it. But uh, then when we gone on the mailing list, uh, the excitation seems to disappear. Mm -hmm. We have a few minutes. Um, how would, so question, question from my side, uh, how would you compare the the implementation of WPS one and two compared to the implementation of OGC API processes. How do you compare the specs and what that meant for you as uh, you know as in developing uh, on Zoo? 
Well, actually, uh, we have a kind of uh, separated uh, code, still reusing the same uh, generic function, but we have made a lot of modification in the way we are handling uh, request and the way we are providing uh, the output response. But uh, from my point of view, the OGC API processes is a uh, is overwhelming, is very better, is much better than the WPS uh, standard in uh, because we can uh, have uh, more, uh, how to say, uh, uh, new trend technology uh, uh, involved in the infrastructure. Still, uh, I should mention that I have still some uh, issue with this uh, OGC API processes because it doesn't let me do all the thing I was able to do with WPS 1.0.0, unfortunately, such as, for instance, uh, running a basic GET request. Uh, in WPS 1, we were able to use GET to execute request. And uh, actually, by reintroducing such kind of uh, GET request, we may also think about uh, reintegrating some chaining in the execution uh, request, which is, uh, from my point of view, not uh, not an option by now, even if we have the workflow extension, which looks uh, really great, and which was a big effort to provide. I think uh, it is uh, too much to have an extension to do something that we were able to do in the first version of the standard. Having an extension to do that, I think, is a mistake, but uh, I, I should stop, I think. Okay. I will want to, uh, okay. And so I don't I'm, want to complain I'm, in any way. So I'm seeing that, uh, so I guess you have uh, OGC API processes screen up on your, uh, your, your, your Swagger client there, right? Right. Actually, this is a Swagger UI mm -hmm. uh, that we are providing to the OGC for the testbed uh, 17, in which uh, the Geolabs company is involved. And as you can see here, you have the traditional uh, execution path to execute a specific process. But we think that it may be also a great thing for use end user to be able to directly interact with existing services. So this is why in the Zoo project, you have the capability to offer some examples of execution. As many of my uh, co-workers are complaining about not showing a map on this user interface, we see, which is only HTML. So I made a few requests that make uh, the kind of map, at least uh, an image shown, which is the result of the execution, as you can see now the execution requests are kind of readable. They are very easy for, uh, let's say, basic input data set. And even for a complex one, it became uh, much more easy. Actually, here you have an array because you can have multiple uh, images. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think the syntax is correct. Mm -hmm. So for this, as I said, uh, you have uh, multiple uh, examples with uh, ready to use with really, oh, you should have ready to use examples. Okay. And uh, here is a small addition. Oh, you don't see the. Here is a small addition we have made, uh, especially in the Zoo project, to choose to overwrite this uh, response parameter and to replace it by a prefer reader, where we are expecting to have a document output when you ask for return representation. You can return minimal, which would mean uh, raw data output. And then you can also say if you are supporting uh, asynchronous request and every single uh, kind of output or only single one. Actually, the Zookernel implementation is supporting both return representation and return uh, minimal. But for response async, respond async, in this example uh, server instance, we made the return representation mandatory. It is just to illustrate that if we are using this uh, prefer reader, we can uh, the server can expose only what is able to handle as a request. Excellent, excellent. This is uh, this is great, um, Gerald. I'd like to thank you for your uh, your excellent presentation. Sounds like a lot of um, 
WPS and OGC API processes uh, functionalities available through this platform, which is great. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great first for you ahead. Thank you. With that, we're going to move on to the next speaker, who is, uh, is let me bring you in here, Sander. And let me uh, just share up your, your screen. Um, whoops, where are you? Okay, excellent. And then we bring Sander back in. Uh, we have Paul as well, so I'll add Paul there. Okay, so our next present, hey Paul. Next presentation is a uh, uh, QGIS Bridge uh, status report. So Sander and Paul will be uh, giving this presentation. Um, Sander is a software engineer at GeoCap in the Netherlands. He's a Pythonista and the product owner of, uh, of the GeoCap Bridge QGIS plugin. Paul is an SDI specialist at uh, ISRIC. He's also a PSC member of GeoNetwork and the PyGeo API project. He's, his, current, his interests are data discovery soil, uh, spatial data infrastructure, Inspire, and, uh, and metadata for that matter. So welcome to both of you, and I'll turn it over to you to give your presentation. Thanks, Tom. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Um, can any, everybody hear me and see my screen? Then, uh... Yes, we can, uh, Sander. Good, good. Yeah, because <laughs> I only have one screen, so I'm not sure what everyone else can see. Um, then let's start. Um, so first, a little introduction of uh, the company uh, behind the GeoCAD Bridge plugin. Um, that's, of course, GeoCAD, and we're a company based in the Netherlands, uh, but we also have uh, an office, or actually uh, an ink. Uh, in Canada now, um, and we have several um, uh, employees in Spain as well. So we're quite international. Sometimes not easy to combine uh, uh, well, uh, all the time zones uh, working together, uh, but we'll manage quite well. Um, anyway, we're a company who focuses on the publication of spatial data discovery on the web. So uh, we. Uh, our um, our owner <coughs> yeah, uh, Jeroen uh, Jeroen Tegler, he is the founder of uh, Geo Network. Uh, so it's a well-known uh, uh, metadata uh, um, platform. Um, 